here with the authors of our most recent ISA briefing note, Cure for the Duration, Banks, Rates, and the Impact on Property. Dom Silman looks after research and strategy for debt and value add capital in Europe and is also a general capital markets guru for us. And Zuhaib is our Director of Investment Risk Management and Strategy. So Dom, the title here for the duration, why did you use that word duration and what does that have to do with the banking turbulence that we've been, we've been seeing? Sure, so duration in the sense that we used it in the title, it has a specific meaning in financial mathematics. So it's the change in price that's associated with a percentage point increase in the yield of any interest rate sensitive security. And those relationships are inverse, of course. So as the yield goes up, uh, the price of the security goes down, so the value drops. And we've seen global central banks, including the Federal Reserve in particular, raising rates globally to counteract inflation. So this has led to drops in the value of quite a lot of interest rate sensitive securities, including really riskless US treasuries, and then riskier but interest rate tied assets like corporate bonds, uh, and also including long hold private equity real estate. As the Fed raised those rates and these kind of mark to market losses, so if you like real time value losses in bond portfolios became more widespread through the market, it led to difficulties at a number of banks, uh, in, in particular the one that outside of crypto markets kicked off this major wave of bank resolutions with Silicon Valley Bank in the United States, but we also saw the sale of Credit Suisse to uh, UBS in Europe, and both of those are, are linked to interest rates. In, in the case of SVB, they had a large portfolio of near riskless US government securities, US treasuries, but those are really closely tied to the policy rate. Under US accounting rules, these don't generally have to be held on the balance sheet at mark to market, and they're money good. They have the full faith and credit of the US government. So this is only really a problem if you have to sell. And that kind of selling pressure came from uh, mostly a concentrated deposit base of tech firms which were starved for capital uh, for reasons that are also related to interest rates but in a different way as their venture capital funding sort of sought higher returns or became less willing to fund them that way so there was a need to withdraw deposits. Credit Suisse was less kind of idiosyncratically concentrated in particular securities and was more a kind of general lowering of confidence in that bank that led to its resolution. That kind of broad wave of instability in financial markets, and particularly in the, the banking sector, led to expectations for interest rate rises to either kind of slow or for interest rates to be, to, cut, to in fact be cut. Uh, and that kind of helps there be a self-resolving quality to this interest rate situation in that those kind of interest rate sensitive securities as expectations for rates go down, the value of them goes up. So it kind of slightly shores up balance sheets. But in practice, what we've seen is really those expectations for interest rates have come full circle from being higher before the banking crisis began, uh, as the focus was really on inflation and the strength of labor markets, to expectations for quite significant cuts this year, based on this financial sector turmoil, to actually kind of back where we were, as we've seen central banks prepared to follow through with the interest rate rises that they'd set out before the crisis. So we're kind of back to more or less square one with interest rate expectations at this point. Right, so our first LaSalle macro quarterly which is a revamped version of our macro indicators deck. It has a lot of charts in it that will show really exactly what you're talking about, this coming full circle with rates through all of this turbulence. And that is released alongside this uh, briefing note. So Zuhaim, in your role, helping our portfolio managers manage investment risk, you've thought a lot about how investors can, can really deal with the volatility and the risk created by an environment like this. How will, you know, what can investors do? So, yeah, so a key consideration for us is adjusting our focal length and really um, observing, you know, the challenges from a higher perspective. And really, you know, going back to what Dom's been saying about the, the kind of the idiosyncratic and specific risks around what's happened with Silicon Valley Bank and also Credit Suisse, they are very specific to those organizations. And the challenge we face is, um, you know, markets can be irrational at times, and those um, idiosyncratic risks can escalate and become market level and kind of systemic risks. And we've seen that over the last month and a half, we've seen a lot more volatility. But I think, again, as Dom said, the, the increase in interest rates recently has, has shown that uh, central banks have taken a very kind of positive approach to 
uh, managing managing this kind of period of, of volatility. You know, they've stepped in where they've needed to, um, but ultimately, uh, we think the fin financial conditions are resilient. Um, I think the other the other piece is around, um, you know, just the systemic kind of volatility that financial markets have. Um, you know, it makes it much more difficult to manage and uh, diversify any of the risks um, at that kind of higher level. And therefore, our guidance for investors is to um, observe, be aware of those risks. But actually, the value add is really at the, the micro level, understanding your explicit um, banking exposures, um, making sure that, um, you know, we're kind of balancing that against key measures of banking health, you know, it might be credit default swaps, uh, liquidity coverage ratios, and making sure that we're kind of comfortable with what's happening. Um, you know, at LaSalle, we've done our own in-depth review of our own banking exposures. Um, we've also um, put together a tool which looks at um, close to 100 uh, key global banks, um, and that analysis feeds through into our um, kind of global um, risk management process and really the intention there is to help kind of inform our bro broader view on uh, the kind of the enterprise and investment risk management pieces that we're, we're heavily focused on. So that's a perspective on managing the risk and clearly a situation that has the uncertainties that we're facing today in the bank. Uh, risk is a big element but are, Dom are there opportunities that, that come out of what we're seeing as well? Yeah, we think so. Since the global financial crisis, we've seen a kind of an incremental increase in regulation uh, around commercial banks tends to accompany state aid to those institutions. So there's, there's almost a kind of quid pro quo where as those banks kind of lean on, on governments more and more, they're expected to tighten up lending standards, probably reduce higher risk lending, but, but sometimes these regulations can be sufficiently broad that, that actually they reduce bank lending activity quite materially and really since the GFC we've seen alternative lenders, especially in commercial real estate, move in to fill that gap more and more and we expect that process to continue. So we don't yet have good visibility on exactly what the regulations will look like after this wave of volatility but we expect that there will be some, again, perhaps marginal but perhaps considerable tightening of lending standards that will cause regulated commercial banks to, to pull back from a few different kinds of lending to the real economy, including real estate, and that's where alternative lenders can kind of move in to fill that gap. Funding models for alternative lenders are typically less runnable, uh, if you like, than the commercial bank deposits. They're not generally available on demand, so there's a more kind of stable funding model for that lending. Right, so a lot to keep track of over the coming weeks and months as the situation unfolds. Um, we've seen some stabilization recently, at the time of recording, um, but that could change. Uh, in a situation like, like this, it, it, the outcomes really depend on a kind of interaction between what policymakers do and hard to predict sentiments uh, that are more psychological uh, in the marketplace. But clearly, it's something to monitor on the risk side, likely to lead to some changes that create opportunities uh, as well. So uh, if, um, if, if you want to read more of that, read the full report, download our LaSalle Macro Quarterly in the Insights section of LaSalle.com. So Dominic Zuhave, thanks for sitting down with me today. Thanks, Brian. Thank